Not paper towels. Paper towels, so we're having to use toilet paper, which it's is- It's like gold these days. Yeah. Some good stuff, not that single ply bolt. Yeah. You may remember that back in the winter, we were originally planning to replace our standing rigging with swaged ends on both sides. We were um, trying to find a rigging company to do that for us. We couldn't find anyone to take us on. So we decided to change our plan and to do it as uh, swaged at the top and the wires, which we ordered from West Marine, and then to do stay lock fittings at the bottom. So mechanical fittings at the bottom. Um, which would allow us to do the install ourselves as well. We did swage at the top because swage fittings are very low maintenance. If you don't have to inspect them very often like you do a mechanical fitting. So putting those at the top because uh, they're, they're slightly more reliable than mechanical fitting because you don't have to like inspect them or take them apart and check for corrosion occasionally. So they're a good thing to have up high. And on the other end is the mechanical fitting just better for being down low. Yeah, because you can inspect them more often. Because you can inspect them more often. Without having down. to go up the mast. Up the mast. And then the other thing is the cost thing. The swage fittings are much cheaper than a mechanical fitting. Right, so to do mechanical on both ends didn't really make any sense at all. <clears throat> um, but to do swage at the top and mechanical at the bottom worked for us. And we're actually especially grateful that we did it because if you saw two weeks ago or two videos ago uh we chopped some of our mast off and i'll put a link to that video up here um but we chopped some of our mast off which if we had gotten somebody to swage both the tops and the bottoms uh we would have been sol on that Damn. and <laughs> it wouldn't have been good so we are happy we decided to go this way it went very smoothly as you'll see um and we're pretty happy full disclosure though we are not riggers um, and this is for kind of entertainment purposes more than informational purposes so um, we got a lot of great advice from some riggers and some other sailors that had done it themselves and we're kind of putting all of that into this video so you'll kind of get all the tips and tricks that we got but we are not riggers and should not be treated as such so yeah let's see my box full of videos sure Oh, is this the McMasterson stuff? Washers. McMaster car. Pins. More pins. More pins. Bolts. More bolts. Single bolt. Sleeves that go inside the mast with the pulley. The original ones are aluminum. I ordered these nice bronze ones because spiffy. It's spiffy, and I can also take it apart later because it won't be corroded. I like that idea. Thank you. Got a box of 100 cutter pins for four dollars versus like a like five five pack for like. Yeah, at the hardware store, like a five pack is like like. $4. Yeah, that's why you ordered stuff from the car. We got some nylock inserts. And some more nylock inserts. Nylock bolts. This bolt was a dollar. At the hardware store, it was three dollars. How much money do you think we saved by shipping from McMaster Card? $100. At least $100? Yeah, these pins Maybe like six or seven dollars a piece, and this was this eight four pack was like eight dollars. So. so, what was the total cost? 105. So, we got the mass stepped, and what I did, these are the new shrouds, and they are cable clamped to the old shrouds and the old turnbuckle. That way, I can cut and terminate this wire at the proper length, because I wasn't exactly sure what the exact length would be, because we got new chain plates, new spreaders, and the mass is a little bit shorter now. So, so as we step the mass, we just clamped everything together, 
and tighten up the turnbuckles. You want to be very careful with cable clamps if you go this route. You could potentially crimp your new wires and that would be really, really bad. To safety, the guys have still left us. We're still under the crane. They still hold to the crane. So. Right there? Up a little bit. Up a little bit. Right there. Right here? Yeah. Now we mark that I have the turnbuckle um, two thirds open. Okay. To allow for some wire stretch. And we're cutting it with a grinder. These are those cable cutter I thought of my grandpa's house. Thanks, Grandpa. Ready? Mm hmm. So that one's a much smoother cut. These are reusable, except this guy. So I actually bought a couple extra of these just. That's good. They're like six dollars. Yeah. Now you gotta spread the wires. It's a very high tech tool. This is my trick flip-flop, stick it on there, twist, <laughs> and it opens up the wires. You take the ferrule, you stick the ferrule on the inner wire, like that, then you start bringing these wires back. And what did Chris say was so important? You can't see it quite yet. Okay. okay. Close. Let's get the ferrule in the correct position, which is one eighth of an inch from the end. That is very precise. Oh, you've actually been like measuring it? Yeah. Okay. How important. Oh, I don't I didn't know how it's important it was. It says an eighth of an inch. Oh, well, well. It's the rig, honey. It okay. says an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna say it's a bit. Okay. Alright. Tape off. Bring it that down. And then you wanna get the wires like evenly spread around the ferrule except for that notch in the ferrule. See it right there. So you do not want a wire to fall inside of it because then it won't be able to compress quite properly. Um, okay, hold on. I just want to get a close up of that. Let's so go. no, so put a cross for that. Don't, yeah, no, don't, put, don't do what that's doing. So let's pop it out like that. Not down to help keep the wires in place easier. Finish up. Just that's what it looks like. And you take your flip flop back on. Bit. So you can see that the, you want to pop it off 
before you cinch it down all the way, just double check to make sure there's a wire did not pop inside that groove in the barrel. And it has not, it looks good. Now we'll tighten it down all the way. That's definitely more than half or two thirds. As you tighten it, oh, it starts all the way moving. Oh, that's that's like. I'm gonna get them so they're equal. So as they come in, one doesn't bottom out before the other. Gotcha. Oh, I have the, the lowers are tight, so I can slack this one without issue. Or putting it on? Tightening it up. That's the last one. That's the last one. They've all got fittings. A quick recap on the like where we got all the pieces. Um, wires came, the wires and swaged ends came from West Marine. The mechanical fittings came from riggings only. Um, and a lot of the bolts and pins and all that stuff came from McMaster car. It's been 600 nautical miles on the rig so far. Everything's great. Uh, we had a little bit of wire stretch on the lowers that I got to take up with the turnbuckles, but as we remember, I left some adjustment room in there. So everything's great.